one of eight green rooms on the building, so they wrap all the way around, and uh, we've got little mini green rooms over on the other side, and if you look over onto the, um, the other wing, the view wing of the building, um, you know, the, the aim is really to capture as much as possible in terms of stormwater runoff. Anything extra gets naturally infiltrated back into the ground. Um, they are intensive green roofs, um, so they, these ones here, for example, have the trees on them and they will grow quite large um, and were designed to, to handle the, the capacity and weight. Um, and uh, if you look over through as we go, when we go back, you can take a look at some of the permeable paving and really just how the whole site is really designed to try to maximize uh, water, uh, water recharge. Um, all of the buried lecture theaters over on the other side, and they simply just have turf grass on top of the roof, so I'm they're blocked off. Uh, a little bit more than that, uh, about, yeah, 0.11, uh, okay. yeah, a little bit more, but the intensives are much more deep. Um, Ken, do you want to say, Ken Josephson is the cartographer working in the building. Do you want to say anything about this building and this roof? I mean, well, it's uh, certainly a dream of the uh, user committee to have vegetated roofs of one sort or another. You can uh, um, accessible green roofs, and we're working towards that. The architect has worked uh, very, very closely with us through the whole process. At this stage, we're not really comfortable with having spaces publicly accessible. Yeah. But they're designed in such a way that we can kind of work towards that as we get more comfortable with it. How did they get away without a radar? Uh, mm -hmm. For just that reason that there is that they aren't accessible at this stage. Yeah. 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 But uh, there, are, there is technology to uh, uh, sort of retrofit green yeah. on here that don't have to be uh, connected to uh, structure. They don't have to really compromise the uh, vapor barrier. So we do have an accessible green roof on the other side where the mathematics department is, which has the full. Yeah, I mean, we're not publicly. It's limited access. And there is a patio area, and I won't encourage you to go close to it. But down below here, environmental studies has a, an accessible space there. But will be developed with uh, sort of raised movable planting beds. That's sort of the design process uh, right now. But even the uppermost roofs that you can't see are vegetated. It's really important to us that it wasn't just the, the appearance of a roof. Yeah, really yeah, maintenance. This is how that handle. The first couple of years, there'll be uh, there's there's some weeding going on. There are these are native grasses and a wildflower mix that are in here. We've got vine maples, sumacs, wild strawberries. This was weeded uh, quite rigorously in the spring, of course, you can see yeah. uh, the, lots of weeds have come back. Uh, but then, so it's going to take a couple of years for the plants to come back. So we've got some aerial photographs of this building um, on our website, euvic.ca slash sustainability, which you can download and see all of the roofs. So it's kind of neat to be able to see the entire building and facility from, from as high as possible. So it really does offer a really spectacular view. Um, but you start to see how the building design really kind of does that, uh, uh, you know, design with nature con concept and components. So these were all part of the yeah. And how long are those? Uh, they started last fall. Well, last fall they were done. Yeah. 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 How did it end up looking over the summer? Did it get really? You know, it wasn't too bad. It was no. brown well, in some spots. Yeah, absolutely. It was pretty wet in summer. Yeah. Yeah. Just a question on the trees. So the trees now they're going to obviously grow up. Is there any issues around wind or, or any of that sort of stuff? They, they're deep enough that that's yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the soil goes between ten and eighteen inches. It does go soil. That's sufficient. Right? Yeah. yeah. And we had hoped that as they get older as well, we can hide these vent stacks. Yeah. These come up from the uh, the lower floor. Yeah. All the sort of hardcore science, geography, physical labs. When uh, when they were doing the green roof, did they do like the wicking spells and the like, Stuff like there's stuff there for, yeah. for, for water retention. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. You know, one of the things is, is that having that variety of both intensive and extensive also uh, helps us kind of document and understand well what works on our campus, what doesn't. Uh, knowing that this is very quite, you know, close to quite a natural area, what kind of birds do we have up on here? So it's going to be a bit of an interesting learning experience for us. Uh, so that's why one of the reasons why they want to do different varieties and types of green roofs, just to see what's going to be the most successful for campus. So the Monitoring them, biodiversity monitoring Yeah, absolutely. Um, Restoration of Natural Systems, Environmental Studies 341 are going to be up here on a regular basis. Uh, each semester documenting changes, seeing what's happening. Our ground staff is also going to be following up with that. Uh, we have a green roof that's being constructed on our First People's House right now, which is just an extensive green roof, but they're trying to learn as much as they can from the first year and a half of this building to be able to apply over there and see what works, what plants take the best, that kind of thing. So. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a part of kind of figuring out where's our best strategies and how can we ensure uh, the, the most success in the long term. There's a lot of interest, I think, from all different <laughs> groups. So that there, there are some groups that are very much interested in getting access to the roof and start experimenting with urban agriculture mm -hmm. on rooftops. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. see yeah. right. Have you so, had like, animals and things? Like, have you had um, frogs or anything? Just suddenly appeared, or have seen them. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Looking yeah. forward to it. I've heard salamanders and that yeah. kind of thing. Well, definitely lots of birds up here. They're, <laughs> yeah. In the summertime, we saw lots of birds up here. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The wild strawberries, people, and birds, I think, will be our. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, very kind of cool and, and we're well, happy to show you those photos, but uh, for a lot of people they've never actually been up on a green roofs and, and this is a really neat example I think of how you can have like a, a zero uh, impact in, in storm water, but in fact actually recharge the groundwater and, and add to the, to the site. So 